select the major product of the following reaction. So in this reaction, we see that we have an alkyl halide as a substrate, and we are reacting it with sodium hydroxide. And sodium hydroxide can act as either a base or as a nucleophile. So the first thing we want to do is decide the reaction pathway. We have seen that alkyl halides with bases and nucleophiles can undergo both substitution and elimination reactions. And so the first thing we want to do if we're trying to decide the pathway is we want to look at the structure of the alkyl halide. And we see that we have a secondary alkyl halide. So we have a secondary alkyl halide. Secondary alkyl halides tend to undergo either SN2 or E2 reactions. And so the next thing we want to look at is the nucleophile or base that we're using. And we're using hydroxide. And this is a strong, small base. So with these two things together, a secondary alkyl halide and a strong, small base, we're going to tend towards the E2 pathway. And because that base is small, we are going to form the most stable alkene that we can. Okay, and so with the E2 pathway, this is a concerted mechanism. I'm going to draw a generic mechanism here. I drew the hydrogen and the leaving group 180 degrees apart because that's how they need to be oriented in order for this reaction to work. And so that means we need a hydrogen that is 180 degrees away from this bromine. And so we've got a benzene ring on one side. There's no hydrogen there. The other carbon atom, we've got an ethyl group. We see a methyl group sticking out of the plane. That tells us that we have a hydrogen atom going into the plane. And so we need to know, is this in an orientation that can undergo an E2 reaction? And it is. This hydrogen is 180 degrees away from this bromine. So we can draw the hydroxide and show the reaction with this conformation of the alkyl halide. So we're going to have the base remove the halogen. Those electrons will come in to form the alkene, and this will push off the bromine. And so the product that we will get, um, the easiest way to draw it would be to redraw um, kind of this framework. So we have the ethyl group. The methyl group was sticking down. Um, it's becoming sp2 hybridized, so that's why I'm not going to show it with a wedge. It should be planar. We'll have an alkene right in between these two carbon atoms and then a bond to the phenyl ring. So we have formed this tri-substituted alkene that's conjugated with the benzene ring, so fairly stable. And specifically, we want to make sure that we select this isomer. So this is the E isomer. We can see the higher priority group here and here. So that's the E isomer. And that is option A.